because of the lighting, I really cannot see all of you, and that makes it very difficult. I will not be able to tell if you're staying awake during this homily or not. <laughs> On the feast of St. Blaise, I was visiting one of our grade schools, and we were explaining to the first graders why we use candles to bless their throats. And I noticed that this one little boy was very, very confused. And his eyes kept getting bigger and bigger. I said, why, what's wrong? And he said, well, then you're going to burn our throats. <laughs> it's an innocent comment, and of course we would not do that. But I certainly hope all of you are on fire. And most likely you are because of God's many graces bestowed upon you through your participation in this conference. And with all of you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I thank the many people who organize the Ignited by Truth conference, and I thank our very gifted and talented speakers who share their spiritual insights with us. We are so grateful to all of them. I do have to admit, though, when I was listening to Raymond Arroyo and those wonderful impressions that he does, <laughs> I was just hoping he does not have a Bishop Burbage impression. <laughs> We conclude our conference at this Mass on the first Sunday of Lent, in which the Gospel tells us that driven by the Spirit, Jesus goes in to the desert for a period of 40 days. And in sacred scripture, the word desert is very symbolic. One of the meanings of desert is that experience where one encounters trials and temptations, just as Jesus did. And the Lenten journey that we now begin calls all of us into the desert. And you know what that means. A desert experience where you encounter Temptation, as you strive each day to live holy and faithful lives. But you're tempted, because we live in a world that in so many ways seeks to seduce us with materialism and secularism, with empty promises. It's the same world that will ask us to compromise our faith and our beliefs as it denies the sacredness of all human life, as it challenges the true meaning of Christian marriage, as it even threatens to attack religious beliefs and liberties that are ours as a faith-filled people, as a nation, under God. And in the midst of these temptations, there are even more. The evil one putting some thoughts into our minds, getting us to the point of sometimes thinking, well, I don't have the answers to these complex issues. I don't have the skills or the abilities to have others embrace the truth. I can't confront this evil, it's so overwhelming. I really can't make a difference. These are all temptations. And so thank God, in the midst of them, we receive the good news of the other meaning of desert. The other meaning of desert is that experience where one encounters in a very intense way the love of God our Father, as Jesus did. 
when one actually experiences the truth of that first reading of God's covenant with us, of God's faithfulness, when one comes to realize in a new way that we are partakers of Christ's victory over temptation and sin and death, and when we come to truly believe that in Jesus Christ, who is the truth, in his teachings and with his sacraments, we have all the grace and the strength and the wisdom that we need. Dear friends, as we begin this Lenten season, you are invited to intensify this desert experience, this rich encounter with our living and loving God. And so I encourage you to embrace with renewed zeal and vigor those ancient but so helpful disciplines of prayer and fasting and almsgiving. The desert was also a place of solitude, being alone with God. If during this Lent your prayer life is to become richer, then you must make concrete efforts to allow for that solitude in your life. We're all so busy, constantly moving, I know. But we have to slow down. We have to stop, be silent, and be still. It was in the desert that the Israelites and others came to fully realize how dependent we are on God. So fast from those things of the world that distract us and consume us and give us a sense of false independence so that you can realize more than ever that our only real power is that which comes from God. Jesus did not stay in the desert. He returned, as we heard in today's Gospel, to proclaim that the kingdom of God is at hand. Dear friends, that is the message you must go home and you must share. Ignited by truth, you must bring it to others and to all the places that God sends you. And do so, do so with courage. And do so in the spirit of charity. Will it always be easy? Of course not. We live in a society that so often dismisses the truth. And it is tempting to get disheartened. But we cannot. We must not. We are believers who at this Eucharist profess that Jesus Christ is the truth, the one who conquers all things, the one who sets us free. In that spirit of faith, Please be encouraged by these words of Pope Benedict XVI, the words that he spoke at his audience on Ash Wednesday. Dear brothers and sisters, in these 40 days that lead us to Easter, may we find new courage to accept with patience and with faith the situations of difficulty, of affliction, and of temptations, knowing that from darkness the Lord will make a new day dawn. And if we are faithful to Jesus and follow him on the way of the cross, the bright world of God, the world of light, 
the world of truth will be gifted to us in this sacred season and forever and ever. Amen.